Hi there, this is Mark Haddad here again. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure the uh, RIP uh, Dynami routing protocol on Cisco IOS. So what is RIP? RIP is a routing information protocol and it is a part of uh, the dynamic routing protocol uh, which is a distance vector routing protocol so we have seen in uh, another video i was speaking about the static route and the default uh, route so that means that every time that uh, we wanted to configure a route we have to make it manually when we use the static and the default route now if we want that the routers will learn the routes from each other dynamically without the need that we have to every time uh, in case we have one link down that we have to create another route manually so this happens automatically then rip is one of uh, these routing protocol that can do learn the route automatically and dynamically without the need of uh, the input of the administrator to be able to configure it so we configure only one time actually the rip and that's it and then at the end and then the routers will be uh, teaching each others about the route now RIP is not uh, really recommended to be used in uh, big networks because uh, it is based on uh, hop counts. So that means it can go up to 15 hop counts, 15 routers. The updates of the uh, routing updates coming from RIP can go maximum to 15 uh, hops. So that's why it's always same, said that it's not recommended to use RIP on big network. If you have a small network, then RIP can uh, work pretty much. But nowadays we can see that most of people go to some other routing protocol, uh, of course, the dynamic routing protocols like OSPF, which is another category from the dynamic router protocol, which is the uh, called uh, the link state uh, routing protocol. Because on the uh, on the distance vector where RIP is, there are also some other problems for of looping and some more issues that can happen on RIP. While on SOSPF, for example, which is a link state dynamic route protocol, those problems are not there anymore. Now, what is important for us now is to know how to configure RIP on the Cisco IOS. Let me show you what is my scenario and then we start doing directly the lab. So this is my scenario. If you have already taken my video or watched my video about the static route and the default route, you see that the scenario is the same. So now instead of using the static route and the default route, what I'm going to do is just to configure RIP. So this router over here has this uh, network and this router has this network. So say there is a computer here and there is another computer here on this network. Now this computer is making ping to 2.2.2.2. What's going to happen? The ping will come to router 1 and if we don't have any routing, then router 1 will open his routing table. We say, okay, you want to go to 2.2.2.2 network or IP. Then you look on the right table, you say, I don't know about it. I only know about this network because it's directly connected to me. And I know about this network because it's directly connected to me, but I don't know anything about 2.2. Then what is going to happen? He will drop it. So this will be dropped. For this reason, uh, we have to configure a route. Now, uh, say that in a way that this uh, traffic uh, came to router 2 and router 2 for uh, get it to the computer and now the computer is replying back. So also this router, he will open his routing table and he will see, hmm, you want to go to 1.1.1 uh, network. Then he will say, I don't know anything about it. Then what he will do when it's coming back, also he will uh, drop it. So that's why we also need to configure the uh, routing over here. So what we are going to do now, we are going to configure RIP on both routers. So RIP, as I said, it's a dynamic routing protocol. So I just enable RIP on this router. I enable RIP on this router. And then I will say to router one, this uh, uh, interface or this IP is connected to me. And this one also, same I do on router two. Then, in this case, router 1 will send uh, the uh, uh, update, routing update. He will send the routing update to router 2 every 30 seconds. And we tell him, hey, router 2, uh, I have connected to me 1.1.1 and 192. Do you want to add anything inside your routing table about those two networks? Then router 2 will open his routing table and he will say, okay, 192.1.1.1. I already know it because it's directly connected to me, right? It's connected to me, so I don't want it. But 1.1.1, .1 I don't know about it. So let me add it. So he'll add it inside his routing table. Then in this case, 
he knows that if you want to reach 1.1.1 .1 .1, then he knows that it has to go via router 1. Same router 2 does. So router 2, every 30 seconds you send a routing update to router 1. And by default, the routing updates on RIP are sent. If you use RIP version 1, they are sent as a broadcast and on version 2, multicast. So you can see this is not very efficient, especially on version 1, which is broadcast. So every 30 seconds, a broadcast of routing updates are being sent from one router to another. That's why RIP is not very recommended to be used. But back to this scenario. Router 2 will send the routing update to router 1 and we tell him, hey router 1, I have connected to me this network, which is 191.8.12, and this network, which is 2.2.2. So, do you, are you interested with any of those uh, entries? Then you open his routing table, router 1, and you say, oh, 192.8.12, I know about it. It's already connected to me, I, so I don't want to know about it. But 2.2.2, I don't know anything about it. Let me add it to my entry. So, we'll add it inside this entry. Then, in this case, he knows that how to reach to 2.2.2, that is 2.2.2.2, he knows about it. And of course, router 2 knows how to reach to 1.1. And then in this case, in, if router 1, if uh, the computer on uh, this network want to reach to the computer to this network, then he will send, for example, the ping, come to router uh, 1, you say, I want to go to 2.2, and then router 1 say, oh, 2.2, I know how to reach it. It's in my routing table. I'll have to send it to router 2. He will send it. Then router to say, oh, I know how to reach it. It's directly connected to me, and it will reach here. Then the way back, this computer, which is over here, it will send to router to say, hey, I want to send this uh, to 1.1. Then router two will check, oh, I know about 1.1. It's in my routing table. I should send it to router one. You send it to router one. Router one will say, oh, 1.1. I know about it. It's directly connected to me, so he will send it to here. And this way, there is communication. So this is how everything happens in the background on RIP. Enough of theory. Let's go and start doing the lab. All IP addresses are already set. We are not going to put IP addresses. So the IP addresses, let me just clean it a little bit so you can see. So the fast internet IP addresses are set. The loopback interfaces and the IP addresses are set. We only need now to focus on configuring RIP. Let's start with router one. So we are on router one. And to check, if we say show IP interface brief, we see that there is an IP on fast internet and there is an IP on the loopback interface. Same if we go to router two, show IP interface brief. So there is the IP that is uh, on the loopback and the fast internet. If we ping to 192.168.12.1, we have successful ping. And if we try to ping to 1.1.1.1 from 2.2.2.2, we see we don't have any ping because, again, router 2 does not know anything about 1.1 at this moment in his routing table. And if you want, you can check. So IP route, look, he doesn't know anything about 1.1, .1, so he would drop the packet. Now let's start enabling RIP on router 1. So we have to say, configure terminal, router RIP version 2. I'm going to use the version 2, which is uh, in the, the version using the multicast, actually. And over here, we can say, no auto summary. That's to accept the classless uh, subnetting. So it's not important now, but there is something that is very common for me to do it every time I work on it. Uh, and uh, now we have to say network and which network is connected to router one. So we have to say network 1.1.1.1 and we have to say network 192.168.1.2.0. And that's it. That's all what you need to do on the RIP. So that is all the configuration we have to do. Now we go to router 2, configure terminal, and we have to say router RIP version 2. It should be version 2, no auto summary. And then also the connected network to router 2, network 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2 .2. And network 192.168.1.2.0. That's it. So now, believe it or not, the router will start now teaching each other about the uh, routing. Let's go to router 1 again. And if I say show IP route, still nothing. So we have to uh, wait uh, a little bit. If we say just uh, show run, uh, and then we make this section a rip, for example. 
so we see if we have made the conversion correctly that's correct over here and also over here if we say show run and then let's write it again show run and uh, we say section rip yes so this maybe needs a bit of time so now we say show ip route to see here we go so we see now router 2 has learned from r if you look to r this is r here if we look here what is r we can try to find it here r means rip so it has learned from rip that there is 1.1.1 uh, which is connected via 192.1.2.1 look at the picture 192.1.2.1 is the ip address on fast than 0 over 0 of router 1. so that's on router 2 let's check on router 1 show ip route and if you want you can say here show ip route rip it shows only the uh, entry for rip so also he knows about 2.2 also it's via 192.1.2.2 excellent so now let's go back to router 2 and retry now to do the ping that we tried at the beginning of this lab to 1.1 from 2.2 here we go it is working and if we go to router 1 and we try to ping 2.2.2.2 from 1.1.1.1 it is working so this is how you can configure a rip on cisco ios so that is all what i wanted to show you in uh, this lab uh, we have made the lab to show how we can configure rip on uh, the cisco ios again rip is a dynamic router protocol it is uh, from the distance vector uh, dynamic router protocol not very scalable uh, that's why it's not recommended that you can use it uh, in big networks if you have a small network that's possible you can use it but uh, if you can use ospf then it's better but of course on ospf you require to have more knowledge to understand how ospf works rip is very easy and uh, it doesn't require too much of knowledge to know how to configure rip while ospf you're required to have the knowledge so if you like my way of teaching, please do not forget to uh, make like on the video, subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so you are notified on whenever I put new videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your time and see you next time.